Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms. And the last time I was running the sawmill, it felt like the blade was getting dull. And I could see fibers kind of tearing out on the side of the boards. So, we're going to do something about that. And I'm in kind of a lucky situation. Because even though I'm a new sawyer, I've got a friend who's been doing this for 20 years or more. And can teach me little things like the best way to handle a dull blade. The other day I saw a discussion about how long should a blade last, and that depends on a lot of factors. Obviously, it's a little bit like a chainsaw. If you've got mud on the outside of your log and you cut through that mud, it's going to dull in a hurry. Almost to the same level, if you're cutting through a lot of bark, it's going to dull faster. That's why the really high-end sawmills have debarkers on them. And I think I have shortened the life of this blade by being indecisive about where to make my first cut and making multiple unnecessary cuts, sometimes cutting just the bark off of part of the top of the log. But a lot of people on there were saying maybe three or four hours. And even on top of the other things I've mentioned, it's a big factor what species of log you're dealing with and you know, what you're using as a lubricant and how much lubricant you're using. I have done four logs on this so far. Let me check the hour meter. I've got just over two hours on the mill running those four logs, and that seems a little bit premature for this to be dull, but it's also my first time doing this. I don't have a good point of reference, but I know a guy who does. So we're going to go over, we're going to sharpen this blade, we're going to talk to Paul about the cost differences, how many times he resharpens a blade, is there anyone in this area that you can pay to sharpen, what is he paying for his blades, you know, how long does it take, just see if we can work out some of those details so I can decide if I want to buy a blade sharpener. Before we go, I want to see if I can get a close-up on this. If I can see any indication of whether this blade is actually dull or not. Got some buildup on the blades. So I got some WD-40 and I cleaned a section of this. And honestly, I don't know if I can tell anything about the condition of the blade by looking at it. But it's possible that my friend Paul can. So most of you guys who watch the channel on a regular basis know my friend Paul. But if you don't know, you can go check out Paul Case Farms here on YouTube. He's got his own channel. But these are a collection of Paul's used blades. And he's got another pile of them over there. Yeah. So we'll say he's got a little bit of experience with them. And my first question that I wanted to ask you is, can you tell by looking at this if it needs sharpened or not? Yeah, here's the way I was taught to do that. Is use your fingernail. Okay. Drag your fingernail across the tip of it the same way the wood would go. And notice how it just slides. I'm putting some pressure on it more, and it still just slides. So it is some dull. Not that it wouldn't cut. Does it dig into your nail? Just Not slides. really. Yeah. Same thing with the chainsaw is you can yep, the top feel of that, it. The top corner of the chainsaw tooth has got to be sharp enough that you can't pull your fingernail across it. And I don't, I've never used my fingernail on a chainsaw because I could tell after having sharpened it multiple thousands of times probably. But, yep, whenever it gets to where it's that away, well, it is some dull. That's not to say it wouldn't cut. It would probably cut on a mill like yours. It's going to be harder to push, and it's going to make... Uh, less than high performance cuts uh it'll it'll follow the path of least resistance as it gets duller and so you'll ride up over knots or whatever my first thought on it is run them until they won't cut anymore but you will start to yep. see wavy boards is yep. one of the first things you see right and, you, and you'll see that other thing going on where when you enter the log it raises up a little bit and then it falls off the other end as it exits but uh, yeah that one's a little bit dull I'm glad to see you got ones that are same as mine. Seven eighths tooth spacing is the most common. I'm gonna say this is exactly the same blade material as what uh, mine uses. Oh, I believe it's 042 and an inch and a quarter by seven eighths tooth spacing. Now I was commenting that I cut four logs and had two hours on the sawmill and before I decided this might be getting dull. Is that standard? kind of normal or you you know it depends on what you cut we can cut all day on one blade uh if it's fine and not dirty and 
you know, you can, you can judge how you're getting along with your blade like this. We work six hour days and he would change it at noon. Sometimes on sharpened blades, they don't stay sharp as long because all the tempers on the tooth. And as you sharpen it, you're grinding the tooth away. And if you ever get that hot, it'll lose its temper, so it won't stay sharp as long. So yeah. three hours is not unusual. Mm -hmm. And I only got two, and I was, in the intro, I mentioned that I was kind of working my way down into a bowed log, making too many cuts. And I was sawing a bunch of bark only mm -hmm. off the top, and that was probably not good for the life of the blade. Yep. But you do sharpen your own blades. Yep. I, have a, I have a really cheap sharpener. It was the stand for it's made by Easy Boardwalk, but the sharpener part of it is the same as uh, and this one may even be a Harbor Freight uh, sharpener head for like sharpening chainsaw chains. So my interest in this is I want to get the Woodland Mills sharpener, but first I want to find out does it really make sense to sharpen your own blades? Mm -hmm. It's all in what you want to do and how much your blade costs, and uh, depending on how exacting quality your wood has to be and all that. But uh, for us, I can tell you the mechanics of that because I beat myself up with it for a long time. And here's the mechanics of it. I can either buy more blades and throw them away once they've been dull or sharpen them once. And uh, what my sharpener cost when it was new was $400 and uh, it was five dollars a blade for the sharpening not mentioning the shipping because there's nobody local that does it if there was somebody local where i could just run it to them or they had a route that went by me picking up blades might be different but five dollars a blade and now you can't find somebody to do it for that it's probably gonna be six or seven dollars a blade plus shipping you're gonna have to ship it both ways and woodmiser has a program for that but i never was interested in it because i knew after a hundred blades, just the sharpening cost is going to pay for that sharpener. So and in 10 years, I can uh, easily tell you we've been through a thousand blades. <laughs> now, I will, a little quick math for the sharpener and setter combo, which is a different story if you need the setter, but for that combo from Woodland Mills, you could buy about 40 blades. And if you get three hours per blades, you're talking 120 hours on your sawmill before you've paid for just buying new every time. Mm -hmm. And I've went to a bunch of sawmills that guys had that didn't have 120 hours on them and they've had them for years. Yep. So how much you run it matters. It does. But for you, you found sharpening them once is worth it. Sharpening them once is worth it. Uh, and we actually found this out on Woodmiser brand blades that if you sharpened them twice and ran them the, that third time, uh, they would likely break. And breaking a blade while it's in the cut is a headache. It'll get wrapped around your blade wheels or something else on the mill. Uh, we actually had a pair of tin snips designed just for cutting blades because we could figured out we could cut it apart and get the blade out of there quicker that way and be back to going. Uh, and so we quit sharpening them the second time. Well, so I've never broke a blade. When you I'm gonna do, take you'll that know to, it. No, I'm gonna take that to mean I never will. It's like I, I have that plan and that I'm planning to live forever and so far so good. good Same thing good. on the blade. Good luck. <laughs> well, you want to show us how to actually sharpen one? Yep, let's go look at the sharpener. All right. Show if, us how it's done. If your blade is the teeth on it's pointed the wrong way for your mill because there are mills that blow sawdust out one direction and there's mills that blow it out the other way and the blades that we get are shipped to us backwards sometimes so you want to start out with the teeth toward you i usually put my foot on it and then just take the top and twist it so that it turns the other way and that changes the direction that the teeth are cutting now, gloves are optional on that depends on how calloused your hands are now do you fo fold them up like a ribbon yeah. and put them in a box um uh, no we usually unfold them though oh man that's freaking me out just watching there you go, Brock. Take that home. Yeah, get it like that. Every guy I've visited is like, don't ever try to fold them and unfold them. Just throw them. Before you do that, do you have an opinion on the, there's like seven degree and 10 degree blades? Nope. Doesn't, you don't think it matters too much? Or? I don't, I imagine it does matter, but we cut so many different kinds of wood that I don't know that it would be something that was 
it's it's certainly not uh, something that I've experimented with enough to be able to have an opinion probably. Easiest thing to do to start is find the seam. Can you see the seam there? There'll always be a little bit of discrepancy in your tooth spacing at the seam. <coughs> and this indexes it by the tooth ahead, which is not really good, but it works. It indexes it by the tooth behind, I guess you'd say, of, this, of the one that it's gonna sharpen. So when I push it up like that, it's gonna sharpen this one back here, okay? All right, and it just barely has to touch that in order to straighten it up, okay? You're gonna be pretty surprised about uh, how very little it actually takes. And I'm running a uh, CBN wheel. Uh, I can't remember what, what the actual name is. Uh, they wear out too, though. They last a lot longer. Well, here's the thing. If you use a stone, you have to keep shaping the stone back to this shape. And it'll wear off in just a couple of blades. And so you'll have to shape the bottom, or you have to grind the bottom of it off to be able to shape back to the edge because it's actually sharpening right here on the very end of the edge. <coughs> this hadn't been turned on in uh, since before we moved the mill. So does he have a big stack of blades right now? Yeah. That he's sharpening? Yeah. And so you, you, you pile them up and then you'll sit down for an hour or two and sharpen all your blades. Mm -hmm. That's kind of monotonous, but yeah, if you want to do it that way. I always try to keep him sharpened some up, and you can see I got two hangers here, so that was always a dull one. And so you, I'm sure you want to see what this looks like. Yep, I'll watch you work. I don't believe we're getting all the way to the go, but I'm going to adjust it down just a hair. You're watching this you're probably gonna think i was playing that at four times speed but that's just how fast paul works so i i made a video about machine sharpen versus hand filing a chain on a chainsaw and i came to the conclusion that even though it might be a little slower i'd rather hand file my chains but you're getting you can get a lot of sharpenings out of a chain and my thought was you're kind of heating that and you're weakening the temper on it but I can't imagine you'd ever want to hand file a bandsaw blade. You know, they make a little sharpener that will sharpen them while they're on the mill. Mm. And I never have checked into how much one of them was because one of these was so reasonable. But, uh, yeah. I saw a guy on Facebook saying, hey, guys, I've been hand filing this chain. Do you think that's a good idea for this blade? Ugh, sounds a little well, slow that, if you're going through very many of them. Yeah, those ends are hardened, but just the... Just the end. Now, Woodmiser makes a sharpener that, that will sharpen the whole profile. Hmm. And I used to have one, an old one, and it would. It would sharpen the whole profile, and so you could change the whole profile. But the only place it's hardened is on the tip of the tooth. And so every time you sharpen it, you're grinding that away. Mm -hmm. and, and there's another thing you got to be really careful about with these is you don't want to cut into the gullet. If you're grinding it and the shape of your blade shows up in the gullet, it'll break right there because it's a weak spot. Now, as you probably have less trouble breaking them on your mill than what I do on mine because mine has a hydraulic tensioner and there's no give in that. And yours having that spring tensioner, it'll be a little more forgiving. Yeah, I uh, wondered if I'm better at slowing down when there's resistance than a mill that pushes itself. Run a chunk of bark around the between the blade and the... Uh, band wheel and you'll see what I mean. Mine makes an incredible racket when it does that and, and yours will probably thump once, throw the bark out and go on. You know. So for you personally, you only sharpen once. You said you feel like they tend to break after that second mm -hmm. sharpening. Uh, 
So if you're only going to sharpen them once, you don't really need to set the teeth right. back. But if you were going to do multiple sharpenings, that's when you yeah. need to set the teeth. <clears throat> because the teeth are only set to the end. If you look down the blade, you can tell that because the teeth lean in and out, and one they they do them in threes: one straight, one's in, and one's out. And so that's <clears throat> that's something that uh, you only would need to work on if you ground a bunch of the tooth away. So I'm going to a the Oklahoma Homesteading Expo next month in Prior, Oklahoma, June second and third, and I need to take enough logs with me that I can stand there and saw for two days. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any logs right now. You're so, taking your mail? Yeah. Yeah. I got a few weeks to come up with some logs, cutting trees or whatever I can find. But do you have any logs I could buy from you? If uh, I saw you got a stack out there. Yeah, just about everything is here is firewood, but uh, there's no reason we can't get some. So for that event, my ideal logs would be small, easy so to handle, handle them, and yeah. someone can just say, oh, that's how it works, and then they can ask questions or whatever. So yeah. I might be coming back to you, see if I can get just a handful of logs Wait. to take down there. I watched one of your videos about trading here a while back, and seeing how I've got a machine of yours borrowed for like, I don't know, this is going on a month, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we might work I might be able to work something out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. and I got another pile of logs out there to cut up with it. So, <laughs> and I'm the, and I'm a, I don't really care what kind of logs they are. So we might figure something out. But if you guys happen to like homesteading or live near Pryor, Oklahoma, or just want to drive across the country to see me, I'll be in Pryor June second and third. Yeah, I got, I got, a, I got a story, and then I got to go. <laughs> I've got a friend of mine told me he had a really lazy rooster. And I'm like, a lazy rooster? What are you talking about? A lazy rooster? I never heard of such thing. And then it hit me. I'm like, well, how do you know he's lazy? He said, he's so lazy, he won't even crow. He just lets somebody else crow and then shakes his head. Yeah. <laughs> he's Brock with Rock Hill Farms. And we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Thanks for watching.